Hey everybody, I am John Barker and welcome back to another episode of Here to Record Show and Tell. Today we're going to take a look at the Webcaster X2 from Epifan Video and it's a wired or wireless live streaming encoder and it'll let you live stream to YouTube or to Facebook. And in the interest of full disclosure, Epifan has sent me this for review and then once I'm done with this video, I'm just going to send it back to them. Although I've come to like it very much, so I think in the next few weeks I'll pick up one of these and use it for all my here to record live streams. So I think this device is right for you if you want to go live to YouTube or to Facebook but you don't want to rely on using a computer to do that. And of course you have the option to attach a single camera to the Webcaster X2 or you can do in my case which is uh, attach my video mixer, my ATEM mixer and then anything I mix whenever uh, a conference is happening or whatever is being live streamed to YouTube or to Facebook, it's up to me. So let's have a look at the device itself. On the front is a little LCD panel and that'll give you some useful information about what's happening. Taking a look at the first side, you'll see there's a place to put the wireless antenna and uh, a multifunctional button that'll allow you to start stop streaming and uh, turn it on and off the device. Then we have a LAN port for wired internet connection, two USB ports, a HDMI output, optical audio in and DC power. Next up an AV port, a recovery button, SD card slot and another USB port and then finally HDMI in for your camera source or your mixer source. And then just a quick look at the bottom, you have some vents for airflow. And just to show you a quick size comparison, if you've ever had an Apple TV second or third generation, you'll see that it's just a bit bigger than that, um, but thickness wise it's about the same. So here's a quick look at how to set up the Webcaster X2 and get things going. To get started you'll need to attach your network cable. A keyboard and mouse, in my case I have a single dongle for both. Then I attach the power and let the device boot up. Next up I can attach the HDMI out to a monitor and the HDMI in from my source which in this case is just my camera. There's actually three different places you can live stream to, YouTube, Facebook or AV Studio. But for this video I'm just going to look at Facebook and YouTube. To get live with YouTube all you have to do is pair with your Google account. Just make sure you choose the right one. And once that's set up, you'll know that you're paired because it'll say it on the front and you'll see your picture at the top of the screen. And you can either press stream now just to go live or take a look at the published destinations. If you set up a live event in your YouTube live streaming section, then you'll see it pop up in here and then you can, uh, you can just live stream to that event instead of using the live now function. And once I'm ready to go, I can just press start and it will live stream to YouTube. And once you're live streaming, you can see any comments pop up on the side or if anybody li likes and dislikes your video. I found that the delay was around 16 seconds when I tested it, which is pretty good and pretty average for YouTube. And for Facebook, it's a pretty similar setup. You just have to pair it with your Facebook account. And uh, once you've done all that, you can see on the top, it'll pull in your picture and you'll know that you're nicely paired. And just as before, you'll see any comments uh, come in on the comment stream and it'll, it'll all show up in there. If you want to keep a close eye on your comments throughout your live stream, I find it a good idea to go into the menu and uh, turn off hide UI automatically. That means that the, uh, the video and the comments will stay there throughout your live stream. So a few other things we didn't quite talk about yet is that you can go wired or wireless. So um, you can just add a little antenna that comes in the box like that. Um, so I personally prefer to go wired because you know that things are going to work well for you. Um, wireless is an option too, of course, if wired is not uh, available in your venue or wherever you're live streaming. But I'm thinking go wired if you can. Another thing to mention is beta support for USB webcams and microphones. I actually don't have either of these um, on hand so I can't test them out. But um, as they are beta, it's worth testing them as well before you go live just to make sure they're working okay for you. And something else to note is that the AV, the optical audio and the SD card are not in use at the minute on this uh, X2. Um, maybe that's something that will come further down the line but for now it's just something you can't use. The ports have been disabled so keep that in mind if you think that you can use them. It's not ready yet. So let's talk about the pros and the cons of the Webcaster X2. First up for the pros, a big one for me is the really good quality in the final streams. I was really happy with the quality of both the YouTube and the Facebook streams that I did. And I did a bunch of tests and I didn't have any errors along the way. And that's something that's really important when you're trusting a hardware box. You want it to work every time and 
Personally, I didn't have any issues with it, so that's a really big plus. And another pro for me is the easy setup. It finds its own IP address and you just plug it in and you're ready to go within, within a few seconds, which really, really matters in terms of time. And my final pro would be the wired and wireless option. And most things I do, do have the option of wired and I'll always choose that. But having this nice big wireless uh, antenna with the device is a, is a huge plus if you're in an awkward venue or somewhere really difficult to get a, a cable to. So that's a huge plus for me. One of the first cons for me is that you'll need a keyboard and a mouse and a screen to, uh, to really get the full benefit out of the, the webcaster in order to set it up and all that stuff. Another con for me is the odd UI options at times. When you click a box, it'll close and you never really know if it actually set the setting you wanted it to. And finally, the whole preferences and settings thing in two different menus. It can be quite hard to look between the two and find out what you're looking for. I found times where I knew there was a setting for it somewhere, but I couldn't quite remember where it was. So having those two separate settings is a bit of an odd choice. Of course, a con for this device is the single streaming. So you can only go to YouTube or to Facebook one at a time and not both together. Now I understand why that is. And at this price, I'm pretty happy with only having one option. But if that's something that's really important to you, then it's definitely something to keep in mind. And a final small con, I think, or something to be aware of definitely, is that it only does uh, progressive signals, not interlaced signals. Up until a few months ago, I was doing everything at 1080i50, so this would not have worked for me in that case. But because I've now switched over to 1080p25, I'm pretty covered okay. So it, I think it's something to keep in mind if that's what you want to do. So that just brings me to the price. Um, I think it's pretty reasonably priced actually at around £255, excluding VAT. And I've seen it around $300 um, in the US. So I think it's yeah reasonable. If you look at other options out there, this one fits nicely in the, uh, the bottom end in terms of pricing. Maybe those other op options out there have other features too, but I think if you're gonna go out and buy a Wirecast license and a small Mac mini maybe to do live streaming, then this thing, I think the price wise, it works out really nicely. So that's it, thanks for watching. I hope you find this useful and um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about the X2. Maybe I can do some more testing before I send it back to Epifan. Thanks again to them for sending it to me and I'll see you in the next video, bye bye.